Welcome to Richardson IFPD's Tech Chat. I'm Ray Zhang, Field Application Engineer for Power Products. Today we welcome GAN Systems Staff Application Engineer Roy Ho. Uh, Roy, uh, when our customer develop power supplies using GAN Systems devices, uh, they often wonder what is the best way to characterize the junction temperature of the GAN Systems uh, device during operation. Yes, uh, we got a lot of questions from customers on how to capture the junction temperature on our device and how accurate it is by using thermal camera. Mm -hmm. And just let me share my screen. All right. So to answer this question, um, our GAMPAX package material contains a silicon oxide and uh, epoxy composite. So those are largely transparent to the long wave infrared range. So using a thermal camera to measure the device package temperature, you are actually measuring the inside metal temperature of the device. So now for a bottom cool device, you can just use a thermal camera to measure the top side of the device mm -hmm. as a GAN layer is right on the top. And similarly, now for the top cool device, it's a flip chip design inside. So the GAN layer is on the very bottom. And uh, in this case, we can just drill a hole on the PCB and measure its temperature through the hole. And uh, in normal device operating temperature range, the delta between the real junction temperature and uh, the measured package temperature is within one degree Celsius. So that means you can just consider the measure the package temperature is your final junction temperature. And uh, also we verify this by heating up the device with DC current and measure the device VDS and then drink current by digital multimeter. So uh, basically we know the RDS sound value. And uh, in the meanwhile, we also use the RDS sound value to and its temperature coefficient to get the calculated junction temperature. And uh, the calculated and the measured junction temperature agree with each other pretty well. So it confirms using the thermal camera is an accurate way to measure the junction temperature. I see. Yeah, it, it looks pretty uh, straightforward to do these kind of uh, junction temperature characterization for your GAN device. Um, yeah, I, I actually have one of those uh, flare camera at home in my home lab. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, I see that uh, this is uh, the a measurement way for uh, the GAN PX package, but how about the QFN package? Uh, is it done in a similar fashion? Yeah, so we also provide the PDFN package for our smaller device. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's actually also works for this PDFM package. And uh, for PDFM package, basically, we have molding compound inside. And this material is actually also transparent in the long wave infrared range. So basically, if you use a thermal camera to capture zero junction temperature, it's like you're looking into something, you know, through mirror or through glass. So it's totally fine. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's uh, kind of like a e uh, epoxy layer. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Thank. That's uh, that's uh, pretty much answers uh, everything I want to ask today. And thanks for participating in the tech chat, Roy. Uh, if anyone would like to have additional details on the benefits of using GAN systems, GAN technology, uh, please select the Ask an Expert link on the Tech Hub website and complete the brief form. And one of us will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Thanks.